If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the Gospel of Luke, Luke 14. We're going to continue my series uh, that we started. Jesus said, if a man uh, was to uh, come after me, he is to deny himself, uh, take up his cross, and to follow after me. In previous weeks, we looked at denying self. And we'll recap some of those things this morning, but denying self. And today, I want us to look at the next segment of uh, what Jesus uh, outlined as a criteria uh, for his disciples to follow him. And that is today we want to look at how to take up our cross. What does it mean to take up the cross? Luke 14, uh, verse 25 to 35, if you could stand in honor of reading God's word this morning. We'll have the words up on the screen if you don't have a copy of God's word. Uh, otherwise, look onto somebody who has right next to you, and we'll be reading from the King James Bible, Luke chapter 14, verse 25, and the Bible says, And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man, if any man come to me, and hate not his father, and mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, Yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now, interesting verse, very strong words Jesus is using here. And does that mean that you are to hate everybody around you? Uh, no, that's not what uh, he's teaching. For Jesus said, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another even as I have loved you. Jesus taught us to love one another. So what would he mean about to hate? Well, this word is a descriptive word which says, in comparison to how you love me or you love those relationships around you, it must, uh, the relationships around you must uh, uh, um, disappear. They, may not, they could not be as near as what you would love me and follow me. Let's continue reading, verse 27. And whosoever does not he bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether ye have sufficient to finish it, lest haply after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going to make war against another king, sitteth not down first, and consulteth whether he be able with ten thousand to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand. Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage and desireth conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if the salt have lost his savour, wherewith, wherewith shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land, nor yet for the dunghill, but men cast it out. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. May the Lord add his blessings to his word. Let's pray. Father, we just need you now, Lord, for the next uh, few moments. Help us as we look into your word. Pray, Lord, that you would calm our thoughts and our hearts. Lord, if there be anything troubling your people today, Lord, would you give them your peace? May they surrender it to you. We pray for the work of the Holy Spirit today. Lord, we open ourselves to your intervention. We ask you, Lord, that you open our eyes of understanding. Help us, Lord, to clearly today receive your word and to understand it and, and to be doers of the word. We pray, Lord, that you would do a great work in us. We need you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Our previous text was in Matthew 16 and uh, verse 24. Matthew 16, 24, Jesus said that if any man was to come after me, he is to deny himself, take up his cross, and follow after me. Jesus was speaking to his disciples and to the multitude, and really was trying to outline what 
it is like to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Today, you are not a Christian because your birth certificate says so. You are not a Christian because uh, you wear a cross around your neck. You are not a Christian because you've tattooed a cross. Back uh, you know, in those days, uh, uh, you thought, I, I will tattoo a, a, a symbol uh, of the cross uh, on me uh, to identify I will never leave Christianity. Christianity is not about uh, what, you, uh, what is written about you. know, uh, Christianity is being one who dedicates himself to following Jesus Christ. Today we have a problem with Christianity in that we want the title, we want the glory, we want, to, we want to be identified, but we are not willing to pay the price or to be one as Jesus has asked us to be. Uh, today we, we want the free gift of salvation and we'll rejoice and high five over the great work that Jesus has done for us, but when it comes to living out what he called us to live out, we struggle and we sometimes try to find excuses or ways out of that commitment. But Jesus has called us to a life of commitment to his cause. And Jesus wants to do a work in your life. You are his representative here on earth. If his per sole purpose was to save you, We've said this before, that at the time that you believed on Christ, that work is perfected and completed, and then you should be going to heaven. But Jesus wants to save you and leave us here as a church, as individuals, to be that representative, to be the one who is Christ-like, to be the one who follows and demonstrates what it's like to be a follower of Jesus Christ. So Jesus said that if you are going to be one of these people, then you're going to have to learn to deny yourself. And last week we talked about, well not last week, two weeks ago, we talked about what it meant to deny self. How do we deny ourselves? How do we identify? We, we put ourselves... Uh, out of the way and let Christ live through us. Today I want us to look to what Jesus said, that a man ought not just to deny himself, but he is to take up his cross. To take up the cross. What, what, what does that phrase mean, that to take up the cross? The cross today is something that has been beautified and glorified within Christendom. Today we sing songs about the cross, O oh, wondrous cross, uh, lead me to Calvary. And, uh, and we have beautified the image of what the cross is. And, and some of us have, have gone to the extent where we like to identify with that. And we you know, put a nice gold chain with a gold uh, symbol of the cross around our neck uh, to say we love the cross. We love Christianity. But you know, to first century Christians or even to the disciples at that time, the cross was nothing of great value or beauty. The cross was a, a symbol of shame. It was one of cruelty. It was one where men were condemned to die. It wasn't something that is glorified the way we look at it today. We have a cross behind us there, and, and uh, you know, we, we, we come into church, we expect to see a cross, and that's a symbol. We've got one on, on, our, on our building there. Uh, just a, a symbol to demonstrate that we are Christians. But to first century, to first century disciples and people who lived in that time, the cross was something that was really cruel. And it's almost like today uh, it'll be a gallows where people get hung on, or maybe an electric chair or gas chamber, whatever it might be, it was a, a means of execution. So Jesus says to his disciples, if you are going to follow after me, you need to deny yourself, and then you need to carry your cross. What does it mean to carry my cross? Often we think about carrying the cross. Uh, it, is a, it is, you know, I have a burden. Uh, I have been given a disease. Uh, I've been given some sickness, and I've got to live with it for the rest of my life. And we say to everybody, we say, this is my cross. Fellas, let me tell you, your mother-in-law is not your cross. 
You might even be her cross, I'm not sure. But the cross is not some, some ailment or some trouble or some problem that I have to live with and I have to carry for the rest of my life. That is not what Jesus was referring to. Often we seem to think that, you know, this is my portion, this is what God has given me, this is my cross, I have to carry it for the rest of my life. This was not what Jesus was referring to. Jesus said you must deny yourself and then take up your cross. Let's have a look today what Jesus meant about taking up the cross. Well, we'll start off with this. If Jesus asked us to deny ourselves, that was to leave our self-interest behind, we're leaving something behind, then we must be going towards something. We're leaving our life behind and we're going to move towards identifying with Jesus. We're going to leave our self-identity, that is the desires and the things that I want in my life, and we talked about that two weeks ago, to now moving towards identifying with Jesus. The cross, taking up the cross, meant we need to identify, learn to identify with Jesus Christ. What does that mean? What does that mean that I need to identify with Jesus Christ? Is it because I I say I'm a follower of Christ? Is it because that, uh, you know, uh, my birth certificate says so, or because I belong to a church or my name is on on a church roll? What is it that Jesus is really asking for me to identify with? Well, the cross was an instrument of suffering, an instrument of shame, an instrument of a a great price. Jesus wants his followers to identify with that kind of life. The cross was cruel. The cross was hard. But this is the kind of life that Jesus has called us to. And herein is the problem with carrying our cross. We want the glory, we want the reward before paying the price. We want the prosperity, we we want all the good life, we want all the richness, we we want every blessing, We we want all of that in our life without willing to pay a price. Jesus said that if you are going to follow me, you've got to understand that there's going to be trials and tribulations in your life. You know, often we say to people, if you come to Jesus, then your life, uh, uh, whatever problem you had, your, your problems will all disappear. Listen, I know Jesus solves our sin problem, but we've got to be careful that we're not bringing people to Jesus to solve their problems. Because I see in my own life, when I have come to know Jesus, there has been more persecution and more troubles in this world than what I had before. But thank God that His Spirit is in us that helps us overcome this world. See, to take up my cross means I need to identify with Jesus no matter what the cost is. Early Christians did that. Early Christians in the first century, and, uh, and there, are some, there are some Christians in different parts of this world are still having to pay the price of their identity with Jesus. Uh, When you choose to identify with Christ, uh, uh, that is, you will bear his shame. And that is, uh, when you are in the workplace or or amongst your family or or in college uh, and people are ridiculing you because you stand up and you stand on God's word and you say, no, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. Uh, The people, men in this world, uh, have hated Jesus and he said, they're going to hate you also. Are you willing to identify with Jesus when the heat is on? When people are mocking you and are persecuting you? Are you willing to identify with that kind of life? Are you willing to say, Lord, I'm willing to bear the shame for you? You know know what happens? 
Christians get very weak at the name of Jesus when somebody is persecuting or ridiculing. We try to beautify it. We try to, well, I'm not that extreme. I, I'm not, and we begin to compromise and we begin to just to simulate so that we don't stand out as followers of Jesus. You ever done that before? You ever been in that position? You ever been in that position where you had to choose whether I'll stand, I'll stand up for Christ and be ridiculed? And, or I'm just going to keep my mouth shut and I'm just going to blend in so I don't cause a ruckus in this place. Early Christians, when they identified with Jesus, it meant they had to leave something behind. And they had to leave their philosophy, they had to leave their religion, they had to leave their pagan worship. Uh, even the Jews had to leave the law behind and come to Christ. What are you choosing to leave behind? What are you leaving behind to identify with Jesus? Many people struggle with that. Many of us have struggled to, to fully commit in our identification with Jesus. Uh, we still want to belong to the clan. We still want to belong to the family. We still want to belong. And so we begin to compromise on our identity with Jesus Christ. Jesus said if a, one was to follow, one was to come after me, is to deny himself, and then he is to take up his cross. Taking up the cross means identifying with Jesus. It means I belong to him. Uh, I, I have come to him and he has saved me. He has cleansed my life. He has set things in order in my life. I, I identify with Jesus. You know, some of us identify with many things. Today we have a world that is so confused and upside down uh, that different people with different groups are identifying with different things. You either belong to a particular movement, uh, to a particular thought, or you are against it. Today, we have many voices in this world that are trying to draw you to become a follower of or to identify with. I'm asking you today, would you identify with Jesus? Would you be willing to bear his shame? Would you be willing to suffer persecution? Hey, would you be willing to lose your job? Would you be willing to suffer that you cannot advance in a career job because you identify with Christ? Are you hearing me? You know, there, there, are, there are Christians today in, in some Islamic nations that they cannot get particular jobs, uh, they cannot have a particular career because they identify with Jesus. You know, the problem with our, our world where we are in, uh, in this great nation of Australia, is that we don't face a lot of persecution. Uh, we don't face uh, such oppression as what these other Christians do in other nations. None of you have come this morning fearful for your life to meet in this auditorium and to sing praises to Jesus. There are Christians in, in, in uh, uh, communist countries today. I know of certain churches and pastors uh, that uh, when they have to sing, they have to close the doors and have to close the windows. And uh, Christians come from, the, nobody comes on the same road. Everybody uses different lines, different ways to come that they meet secretly. You see, we don't understand that. We have not lived through that. But there are people who are paying the price today to identify with Jesus. What is the greatest price that you've paid? You thought about that? What? What have I, what, what did I have to do, what, what, what did I have to do to identify with Jesus? Some of us really, if we think about that, we haven't endured much. We haven't endured 
as such affliction and suffering like others have. Jesus said, you need to take up your cross. You need to identify with me. Number two, not only is it a means of identity, but also it is taking up the cross means there's a cost to it. Christianity has a price. Let me say, salvation is for free, but living the Christian life has a cost to it. You, you know what, we, what we're like? We want, we want everything for free. I, I, we, we love the coupons, don't we? Uh, we love the Black Friday sales. Uh, we, we love, the, you know, when we go shopping, uh, buy one pair, get another pair for free. Now, it no, doesn't matter how much that one pair is, what are we thinking about? I'm thinking about what a bargain because I'm getting one for free. We love free things. We love things for free. But Jesus said, hold on, hold on, I'm going to give you salvation for free. But when you take up your cross, there's a price to be paid in following me. There's a cost in being a Christian. And you know, this is the problem. The problem why we see in the church today people leaving their crosses all over the place, uh, leaving their crosses uh, in different parts, uh, is because when it comes to, to the point of paying, when it comes to the paying the price of being a follower of Jesus, we say, well, hold, hold on, wait, wait, wait a minute. This price is too much for me to pay. I, I, I think I'll let go of my cross right now. You know, we... Jesus here in our passage, in our text of Luke 14, he said, if you're not willing to count the cost, he says, you're not even worthy of me. If you're not willing to pay the price of following Jesus, then what kind of disciple are you? Every born-again Christian should be a disciple. But the problem is not every disciple is a true follower of Jesus Christ. Jesus wants us to identify with him, but he also wants us to count the cost. There is a price to be paid. There's a sacrifice that needs to be given. Not for the atonement of our sins, no. But we've given our lives to the Lord and said, Lord, you are my God, you are my Lord, and whatever it is, I'm willing to pay the price for you. That is what carrying the cross is. Unfortunately, today, we love to sing about the cross. We love to sing the praise to Jesus. But when it comes time to pay the price, we think it's unfair. We think, uh, God, why are you doing this to me? Why is this happening in my life? You know, to take up your cross has a price to it. The man who carried his cross understood that he was going to give his life, understood that he's paying a price for what he had done. And Jesus is saying to you and to me today, if you've called upon me to save you, and I've gladly done that for free to you, but are you willing to pay the price from here on to serve me? Churches are filled with Christians that want to praise Jesus but are not willing to pay the price, not willing to pay the cost, not willing to, to endure uh, what, what it means to be a follower of Christ, uh, not, not willing to set aside our pleasures, not willing to set aside our own agendas, not willing to set aside the kind of life we have imagined in our heads, but not willing uh, that, uh, that if the Lord calls upon us to do something, command us in his word, we say no to it. We blatantly say no to it because we're not willing to pay the price. We're not willing to sacrifice of our time. We're not willing to sacrifice of our energy. We're not willing to sacrifice of our resources. We're not willing. And so we leave our cross behind. And we go and live our life the way we want to live it. Jesus said that if you are to be a follower of me, you need to take up your cross. Pay the cost. Pay the cost. 
You know what they say, you get what you pay for. Is that right? Do you, do you understand what that means? You pay, you get what you pay for. Uh, you, another adage is, you, you pay peanuts, you get? You get monkeys, right? So what you pay is what you get. And some of us want a great Christian life. We want the blessing. We want uh, God's great reward. But you know what we're not willing to do? We're not willing to pay the cost. We're not willing to sacrifice. We're not willing to give to the Lord. We're not willing to submit to him. We're not, we're not willing to do any of that. We, we want all the praise. We want all the glory. We want all the reward. But we're not willing to pay the cost. I don't know about you, but that sounds pretty selfish to me. Wouldn't you agree? That sounds pretty selfish of us. That's really what carnal Christianity is all about. Carnal Christianity is once all the comforts and joys, but please do not disturb my life. Don't, don't ask of me more than what I'm prepared to do. Uh, we, we seem to draw lines with God and say, okay, Lord, we love you, but this is as far as that I'm willing to go. Don't make me pay any more than that. You know, some people say to me, well, would you go to the gym? And I'd say, you know what, uh, the gym is a good thing for you if you enjoy it, but I'm not willing to pay the price. And they say, no, but it's not that expensive, Pastor. It's only like, you know, $30 a week and you can go at any time. No, no, I'm not talking about the money. I'm talking about I'm not prepared to pay the price of my body. I'm not willing to pay that price. And I think we do the same thing with Jesus, don't we? Uh, there are some things that, that he would ask of us and we say, I'm just not prepared to do that. That's just going to cost me too much. I, I, I'm not going to be faithful in my attendance at church because that just costs me too much. I, I'm not going to be a soul winner and I'm not going to go out and reach people with the gospel because that will cost me too much. I am not going to uh, just surrender my life to the Lord because that's just going to cost me too much. Jesus said, if you are really going to follow after me, you need to what? Deny yourself. Uh, there's some things you're going to have to leave behind. And then you need to move forward. You need to move forward in looking to me and identifying with me. You see, taking up your cross is critical. It's critical to that pattern because if we don't know how to take up our cross, we are not going to learn how to be followers after Jesus. Uh, this, this part is critical because it follows after denying, but it precedes following. And, and if we can't get this right about how we take up our cross, then we're going to struggle in being followers of Jesus. Taking up our cross is to identify with Jesus. Number two, taking up our cross is counting the cost and we're willing to pay for it. And number three, I want you to see this morning that taking up the cross means full surrender. Full surrender. No going back. No going back. Uh, the, the one who was go going to be condemned to die on the cross by, by the Romans uh, understood what that meant. Uh, when he carried his cross, uh, he, there was no turning back. Uh, there, there was no way he was going to let go of that cross and run away and, uh, and seem to escape what was there for him. The one who carries his cross understands that I'm under this weight of surrender right till the end. Right till the end. You know what happens in our lives as Christians? Uh, when we are on a high, we're, we're willing to surrender to the Lord and be obedient to his word. And other times when it's not convenient, uh, we'll do our own thing. Carrying the cross means I'm under the weight of the command of God and I'm surrendered to his will. I'm surrendered to his will. Carrying my cross means, Lord, not my will, but your will be done in my life. Uh, Lord, what, what is it that you have for me that I am willing to do? And not, Lord, uh, what is it, what is your will, and uh, let's just have a look at it, and let's debate it, see, uh, well, I can do this part, well, can you take this part away? Uh, no, 
it's saying, Lord, I am willing to do what you have asked for me to do. Lord, I am willing to live this way. Lord, I, I am willing to be obedient to your word completely. Not partially. Not when I feel like it. Not when the circumstances are right. Not, not when things get better in my life. Uh, uh, not when I get out of this trouble. Not when I get out of this job. No, I am willing to surrender to you completely. And I think that's the trouble we have as Christians today. Our trouble with Christianity is not so much that we are rejoicing we have eternal life. Our trouble today is we're not willing to count the cost. Uh, we're not willing to fully surrender. We're not willing to fully identify. We're not willing to really take up our cross. Now, how, how can I take up my cross? How can I daily... How can I daily take up my cross? Well, I carry my cross when I choose to stand on God's word and be obedient to it regardless of the consequences. Regardless of what's going to happen. Are they going to tell me my job is finished? And they tell me we can't employ you. They tell me you can't be part of this group. They tell me you can't be here. Am I willing to pay that price? Am I willing, am I willing to choose to obey God regardless of the consequence? Uh, number two, uh, am I choosing to deny my sin? and fleshly desires that Jesus would be glorified in my life? Am I willing to do that? Am I doing that? Am I saying no to me and to my desires and saying yes to the Lord? Am I focused on eternal matters? Is my life's ambition just to accumulate things here on earth? What are you living for? What are you working for? Is it really just to accumulate things here on earth? Or are you really surrendered that your home is in heaven, your citizenship is in heaven, and so whatever God puts in my hands, I'm going to use that to advance that cause. I want to see more people come to know Christ. I want to see the work of God expand. I want to see, uh, I want to see God be honored and glorified in his church. You know, today we're, we're thinking about, well, well how, how about, I, can I afford to mortgage my house or buy another house? And can, can I do this? And, I, and we seem to be overly generous with our accumulation and very tight when it comes to the work of God. Now, let me ask you, someone who is like that, are you taking up your cross to Jesus? I think, I think we need to be challenged in what we put, place great value on. Honor the Lord with what you have. Honor him first. And, and he will bestow great blessings upon you. You know, we get that formula the other way around. We think about self. We think about what we need, or what I want. Or what we, but we forget. We forget the things that we ought to be doing and sacrificing for the Lord. How does it sit in your mind? How does it sit in your heart? Have you really taken up your cross? Have you really demonstrated that you identify with Jesus? Have you, have you, have you done those things that the Lord has asked you? You see, Jesus said this in Matthew 16. He said that, Matthew 16, in that passage, says, uh, whosoever will lose his life, uh, who, whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. And how is that? The reward, the reward of for you and for me, 
comes after the sacrifice, comes after the payment. Think about this, think about this. The reward of eternal life that you and I have, have received gladly. How many people say amen to that? Did not come without the sacrifice that Jesus made. You listening to me? The reward of eternal life which you and I enjoy did not come without the price, the cost, the sacrifice that Jesus made. Now, the reward of eternity and what, how you would be rewarded in heaven does not come before the sacrifice that you and I are willing to pay with our lives here on earth. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? What we're thinking today is we want the reward today. But Jesus said, no, no, no. The reward is not today. Today is for us to live a sacrificial life for the cause of Christ. And then on that glorious day, we will receive the reward. If you're prepared to lose your life today, you're going to find a reward in heaven. But if you're not prepared to lose your life for Christ today, yes, you are going to get your reward here on earth. But you're going to fail to see a reward for all of eternity. So the choice is ours. What kind of Christians will we be? Will we learn to deny ourselves? Will we learn to take up our cross? Will we, will we be willing to be a people today that identifies with Christ regardless of the consequence, counts the cost and says, I'm willing to pay the cost. I'm willing to pay the cost. Even with my life, many Christians have paid with their lives. I'm willing to pay the price. And number three, I am willing to surrender to God's will and to his word regardless Regardless, I'm going to do what he asks me to do. Taking up your cross. Not an easy thing. But Jesus said that if you want to be a follower of me, you want to come after me, you're going to have to learn to deny yourself, put some things away, and then come and identify with me. Identify with my shame and my suffering. What does it mean to live godly in this present world? And then the reward will come later. Would you be willing to take up your cross today? Would you be mindful to take up your cross? The Bible says that they that have believed on Christ, they that follow Christ, have crucified, have crucified the flesh and the desires thereof. Are you willing to die daily? Paul said, I die daily. Would you be willing to remove yourself and, and submit and commit your life to Christ? The reward is coming. The reward is coming. But today is a day where we have to pay the price. The reward is coming. Let's pray. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. I want to ask you this question this morning. What kind of follower of Jesus are you? What kind of follower of Jesus are you? Have you learned to take up your cross? Maybe there's some today that say, you know what, I, I have not trusted Christ as my Savior. I know he died for me, but I, I have not had him forgive me for my sin, and I want, I want to know how the Lord can forgive me. If that's you, would you just slip your head up? I, I just want to pray with you. I want to 
spend time after the service showing you how you could be saved. Is there anybody here today that the Spirit of God has been convincing them that they need Jesus and they need to call upon his name? Is there anyone here this morning? Secondly, you're a Christian here today, that the Spirit of God has convinced you and we brought conviction about how you are following. Have you really denied yourself and have you taken up your cross? How well are you carrying the cross? Have you laid it down? Maybe go back to that point where you laid it down and pick it up again. And say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, I want to do all I can with your help to be a true follower, a true disciple of Jesus. The altar is open. Come and pray. You might want to pray in your seat. But let's respond. Let's respond to God's word. Let's not walk out out of here unchanged. I believe each one of us can, can do better in that area of our life of carrying our cross. Would you, would you do that today? Would you do that? Lord, we thank you for your word today. Thank you for the Spirit of God who illuminates us. Help us today, Lord, as we have learnt how we ought to take up our cross. Would you do that work in us, Lord? Remind us, remind us daily that we ought to identify with Jesus or that we, we, we would be willing to pay the cost and that, Lord, we would be willing to surrender to your will and to your word. Help us, Lord, please. We need you. You know us. Help us to be truly that salt. Help us really to be effective in this world until you return. Have your good pleasure in us, Lord. Have a good ple- your good pleasure in your people today. May the Spirit of God continue to work in our hearts, convincing and convicting us of how we ought to follow Christ. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.